We've been using a high-speed camera to film hydrogen balloons exploding. <laughs> I like you, Neil. Brady and Neil thought it might be fun to try and add a piece of metallic lithium to 7up. Long ago, 7up used to contain lithium salts. The reaction of sodium with water is terribly well known. We've done it lots of times on our videos. The orange sodium flame. Holy oh, crap. Oh, it's on your camera. I love boron. Boron is an interesting element. We could make hundreds of YouTube videos about nitrogen and still not tell you everything. The oxygen molecule, O2, has unpaired electrons. Woohoo! And there she blows! You can see in the tube here is actually the result or the, the aim of our chemical reaction today because we wanted to make some sulfur. Pretty cool, it's really good. It's um, kind of a sort of really pale gold colour. Oh yeah, it's very warm here today and the cesium's melted. So we're just going to try and freeze it again. Now some of you may have seen on YouTube, there are videos that pretend to be huge explosions of francium. Uh, Berkelium, which I assume was uh, named after the place of its discovery, which was Berkeley. This is a vial of americium-241 which is one of the isotopes of americium. Potassium metal is very reactive. One of my colleagues who used to work with it described it as evil. Oh! Calcium is the third element in group two on the periodic table. So here we have some calcium turnings. Magnesium is one of the lightest elements. It's right at the beginning of the periodic table. There's a dome-shaped device, and it's fabricated from beryllium metal. And so we've come here because there's a really interesting exhibit relevant to the work of Lawrence, the person after whom the element Lawrencium was named after. Californium is another element which was first prepared at the Berkeley Labs in California. It's got quite a few military applications, usually involving the word nuclear. And it can exist as Neptunium-4, Neptunium-5 or Neptunium-6. There are probably far more molecules that contain carbon than any other element. And you can see that the phosphorus is oxidised in the air and it's taken some of the paper with it to generate a nice P for phosphorus. It is said uh, that people get off the bus when selenium chemists get on. Chlorine is an element that many people have heard of. Incredibly reactive, incredibly poisonous. So this is bromine, it's a small sample, about two or three grams. There are not many elements that are actually liquid. So in the bottom here we see neon, and this is a, this is a, a small glass discharge tube. Helium is the second element on the periodic table. There are 115 more videos to watch. We're in the library of the Royal Society looking at letters about radon. We always think of these scientists in the past as being saints. And here he is sitting in his office thinking, he, he, I've made my competitor feel uncomfortable. Aluminium is a surprisingly abundant element. We're never going to run out of aluminium. This is a piece of polycrystalline silicon. It's a really quite fantastic element. Terbium was eventually discovered, or eventually isolated, by the chemist Mossander in 1843. It was isolated from an earth called Yttria, which was originated in this quarry where we are right now. Nobelium is perhaps best known uh, for the fact that it is quite controversial in terms of its naming. As a name for an element, it is really quite a good one. Manganese is actually a much more interesting metal than you might expect. Now, I understand uh, one of my colleagues said zinc's uh, a bit boring. So, at the moment, I'm in the office of Professor Eric Hope, who is one of the country's specialists in fluorine chemistry. Obviously, Einsteinium has a slight um, resonance for me because many people think that I look like Einstein. Fermium, uh, it has absolutely no use as far as anyone knows, except that it's extremely radioactive. Fermi was an Italian physicist. Mendelevium, uh, which is named after one of the most important people as far as the periodic table is concerned, which is Dmitri Mendeleev. Mendeleev has another cause of fame. He is famous in Russia 
because he was the person who worked out the standard for the strength of vodka. This is uranium turnings. Uranium is the basis of much of nuclear power. The thorium cow is a sample of thorium-229. They thought it was just waste, but then they suddenly realized this fantastic application. So here, you can see we've got a very thin foil sample of dysprosium. I've just realized that erbium is the most crucial element for the internet. It's soft, silvery, quite malleable, very reactive towards oxygen and water. It's a stainless steel container that has plutonium oxide, so hopefully that stuff will see its way onto some spacecraft in the mid-2020 time frame. This is a really quite unusual sample from Goodfellow, and you see this is samarium, so this is one of the lanthanides. Nickel is element number 28. Two or three days ago, I got a letter. It's scandium. I'm going to convince some of the electrons in the metal to jump onto the vanadium. We're going to try and do an experiment today, it's called the gallium beating heart. Indium is a really fascinating material and we're going to show you why it was called indium, how you can mould things out of it and how you can do some reactions. Thallium salts are very poisonous. Element 113 is the first element to be definitely synthesised in Japan. So copernicium, or copernicium as the discoverers would prefer it to be pronounced, is the latest name to go up on the periodic table. There were quite nice crystals that you could see, and there was this great lump of mercury at the bottom. But Neil had quite a lot of difficulty getting it out at the end, and it began to melt and so on. It can be very easily overlooked, but actually it's got some really fantastic uses. The other thing I know about homium is that at low temperature it exhibits very strong magnetism. Thulium, uh, as well as being able to attain the plus three oxidation state, it is also one of those ones which can obtain the plus two oxidation state. We've since made four different isotopes of livermorium. They all have tens of millisecond half-lives, so they're pretty short-lived. So unfortunately, I can't show you a bottle. Madame Curie was Polish, though she did most of her research, if not all of it, in Paris. Polonium is named after Poland. Tellurium. <laughs> You've never had anything to do with this? Nothing to do with it in my life. So this is a new one for me. Argon can be liquefied. Krypton can also be used in lasers. The next day I was horrified. The xenon balloon had got small. They carried sort of little glass tubes of radium in their pockets and were then surprised when they found burns on their flesh. This is a sample of rubidium. It's one of the alkali metals, so it's very, very reactive. And um, we're going to explore its chemistry now by, by putting this into some water. OK, this is the periodic table of the elements that was used for the christening of element 111, which was called Röntgenium. OK, we're going to be looking today at copper. Copper, copper metal. Copper is an element which people are very familiar with. So the aluminium will become oxidised, the iron will become reduced. Hopefully we'll generate a lot of molten iron, which should come from the bottom of the test tube. And you can see that it's so hot it's burnt a hole through the bottom of that terracotta flower pot. But if we go in close now, Brady, Germanium is the first element in the periodic table, beginning at hydrogen, that's named after a country. Brady thought that tin was a really boring element, but we've changed his mind. Antimony, you can see through the bottle, is a really quite nice metallic element. We're going to tell you about the chemistry of arsenic. The textbooks say that when you dissolve arsenic in nitric acid, you make a solution, the poisonous oxide. Protactinium was only really discovered properly in 1918, well after the death of Mendeleev. Actinium, I think, is interesting for several reasons. Curium can be used in thermoelectric generators uh, to produce electricity. So ytterbium, it's a rare earth element, was first identified or first isolated from a sample of a mineral which was recovered from this very quarry. Europium salts, are used in television screens. Lanthanum is the first element in the series called the rare earths. They're not terribly rare. Cerium is one of only two elements which, if you strike it, will make sparks. 
Many people don't think Promethium is very important, including the makers of Mai Tai. There may be a slight argument about how you pronounce the name of element 117. I would pronounce it tenosine, like iodine and chlorine. Astatine was known to be really radioactive. Iodine is a beautifully coloured element. It has this beautiful purple colour. So now you can see the reaction is really going and it's really exothermic. We're forming aluminium triiodide. Lead is a very soft metal and it's easily moulded into all sorts of shapes. This is a pot. They've finally chosen the name for element 115 and the name is Moscovium. OK, I've got a piece of uh, crystalline bismuth. Bismuth is interesting because it is the heaviest element that is not radioactive. Floryov Georgi Nikolaevich Sazdal Institut, где открыли элемент 114. We're going to tell you about lutetium. We're going to show you some demonstrations, particularly a terrific red colour that you can get from it. And this is a sample of cadmium metal. I'm not going to touch the cadmium because we know about some of the issues of toxicity. This is what we're starting with, a beautiful one kilogram jar of silver. And here you can see there is a sample that is labelled palladium. If you heat cobalt chloride, which is beautiful red coloured crystals, to a high temperature, you can drive off the water and make a sort of purplish powder. Praseodymium uh, is a very interesting element. It's been used to enable us to get within one one thousandth of a degree of absolute zero. OK, so gadolinium is smack bang in the middle of the 4F series. This is, I think, the first sample of metallic rhodium that I've ever held in my hands. I'm more excited by the fact that this is worth a quarter of a million pounds than by the fact that it's a thermocouple. So here we have a sample of titanium wire. And upon analysis, they were really, really surprised to find that there were a number of elements, including yttrium, which existed at a much, much higher abundance on the moon. So here I am in Strontian. Now you can see I'm on my own. I'm not with the professor or anyone else, but I have managed to find the address of a local history expert. So I'm going to go and pay him a visit. But with zirconium, I've had one sample, which is big lumps of metal. We're interested in the element Rutherfordium. First of all, you can see that Rutherford is smoking in the lab. We're here in the German state of Hesse at the Institute GSI, where Hassium was first made in 1984. I'm here with more platinum than I've ever seen in my life. People apparently occasionally order wedding dresses from here. I want to talk to you about Seaborgium. They decided that you could not name an element after a living person. But we urged them to check and see, and there was actually no such rule at all. Chromium is a really surprisingly exciting element. We've had real fun in the lab. You're going to see some quite exciting things. <laughs> the first laser pointers were red, they didn't use neodymium, and the green ones have become really quite fashionable among lecturers. I'm in the coffee room where element 109, Meitnerium, was named. And Borium was the first of these super heavy elements to be made here in Germany in Darmstadt. I'd never seen niobium until recently. The ruthenium is very, very finely divided and if I tip it, you can see in the bottom of the vial, very fine powders. Element 110, Darmstadtium, was discovered here in Darmstadt. Tantalum is another element which has become more important in recent years. Today I'm going to tell you some more about molybdenum wires and show you some amazing micrographs. Tungsten is a very hard and heavy element. It is used in the filament of light bulbs. No, this is not a sample of dubnium, but dubnium, like all the elements in this part of the periodic table, can only be made synthetically. One of the big surprises of the whole periodic video project for me was my actually seeing a sample of technetium. Barium's going towards the bottom of the, the group two. Barium is a heavy element. Hafnium is, I think, an element to watch. Rhenium is in the same group as manganese, but quite surprisingly, 
It was only discovered in 1925. I should, on that account, incline to call the metal osmium. Here is osmium, and he's called this because of the smell. And here, I've got a big piece of iridium. This weighs 3.8 kilos. We're in the vault, the bullion vault of the Bank of England. I've never seen so much gold. In fact, I've never seen so much of any element. It's very secure. We've been through a whole series of security checks. I'm here in Dubna in Russia at the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research, and I'm in the office of Yuri Aganesian, after whom Element 118 was named. 